They booked you guys together because when when Brett was first brought in, it was uh, he was there at the end of the Starcade '97 main event. They tried to do a little takeoff of the Montreal incident, and Nick Patrick was supposed to do a fast count, or at least that was the plan. And then, you know, that didn't really go down exactly as they'd hoped. And Bischoff recently said he believes that Hogan put Nick Patrick up to do an irregular count. Brett, you were there ringside. What were you thinking when all this happened? And is that when you realized this is not going to be as fun as maybe you originally thought? Well, you know what? I'll be honest. I thought it was a pretty lousy finish in the first place. The whole thing was stupid and made little sense. Who, who it seemed was, like a really Hogan and Sting. dumb idea Hogan and Sting? to bring oh, me in as a referee and out of nowhere. The whole thing was nonsensical. It didn't make any sense. But it was like, okay, well, Bischoff's supposed to be the genius, and they're doing so great. You know, I gotta, I gotta just sort of listen to what they're telling me to do and do it the best I can. It was a lousy idea, and you can blame the referee all you want, but it is. It was a lousy idea, and the finish didn't work because he counted way too fast because he forgot that he had to count slow. And, uh, you know, it, it just sort of went downhill from there, where it was like, that was probably the highlight of my career there. So, you know, <laughs> it, uh, you know it really didn't. I never thought, and I think Rick will tell you the same thing, is at least when you went to WWF, you knew what you were doing. You know, you, you really you got a clear stood. picture of what you're doing for the next while, and uh, you know how to how to put your input in and how to to make things better. They give you enough of an idea what you do in the next couple of weeks to sort of and who you were working with and what you needed to try to do as far as your storyline went. You know, with WCW, I don't think they knew shit. They never knew zero, and they couldn't lace Vince McMahon's shoes up. They they were so bad, they didn't know anything about anything. There was a bunch of little morons telling people what to do guys like kevin sullivan were giving finishes to guys like me and i just scratch my head and go what am i taking orders from kevin sullivan for like who the hell is kevin sullivan to be given you know i'm i think there's a big difference between vince mcmahon and you know vince at least when he hired guys to be agents and guys that would tell you what to do they were all top pros that had you know, years and years of experience. And uh, they were all good, like from Lanza to Chief J to, you know, Rene Goulet and uh, even Tony Gurria and those guys. They at least knew what a good match was. And they knew, you know, who had good heat. They knew how uh, the sound of the crowd and what the, you know, they could just tell you stuff that, you know, guys in WCW, I thought were really inferior. You know, to, and they, the whole experience there, I think, is they were on the verge of, unbelievable greatness and I can only imagine if they'd had some kind of you know leadership there you know someone that really did know what they were doing that company would be every bit as big as uh, WWE is today yeah direction uh, you know but in, and if that would be so much better for the, the wrestlers in the business because then there would be some kind of leverage where you could go from one company to the other or you could always be a threat to you know just like in Japan with all Japan and New Japan but all that benefits the wrestlers and uh you know, Eric Bischoff and all those uh, morons underneath him, they, they dropped the ball and uh, killed something that was going to be great for everybody. It should have been great for everybody. It's too bad because there's guys in the industry like Rick and myself that, and uh, a lot of guys we've talked about in the last uh, you know last little while that made this business mean something back then and made people start getting interested in it and, uh, and start to follow. And it wasn't about the bodies. It was about the work and the ring and uh, the matches themselves. And if you look at, uh, you know, from the time that me and Rick were, I would say, in our prime in the 90s, um, they were going away from the bodies and the build, you know, the, the Hogan's and the Billy Graham superstars. It was about the it was about the work rate and the workers of the business. And uh, that's why they remember me and Rick today better than they remember um 